for us to celebrate the centenary jubilee with joy today, and to rededicate ourselves with the same spirit of charity and dynamic. In the year 1898, four of the sisters of charity of Saint Bartholomew Catalano and Princess Teresa set foot on the soil of Mangalore and planted the precious topic of the institute as a request of then Bishop Monsignor Abundia Saudini in his day. This was a year of grace in the annals of the history of Sisters of Charity. The two courageous sisters started their mission of rendering service to the leprosy affected patients in the hospital at Campanari under the guidance of Father Augustus Nulla yesterday. Though this mission of charity sisters lasted for a few months, it had its positive impact on the people of this place. So, once again they were invited, Father Diomedes Giovanni yesterday, to take up the apostolate of caring for the sick at Father Nulla's in 1912. Sister Francesca Lorasti accompanied Sister Santa Cruci, Sister Elena Trina, and Sister Julia Swami to Kankanari on the 13th of October 1912. Soon, under the leadership of then provincial Sister Francesca Lorasti, the Sisters of Charity carried out care of the sick and put a solid foundation for nursing. Soon the clergy and the lady of the Mangalore Diocese appreciated the good work done by our founders sisters. In 1915, on May 25th, the first Indian sister, Sister Vengeance Sardana, took charge of the leprosy hospital. In our mission of caring for the sick and suffering, we have truly ventured out into the jaws of the world as it were, when they undertook to nurse the cholera and taste with their patients, with the result that they fell victim to the deadly diseases. In the year 1917, Sister Felicia Salvi succumbed to cholera and later Sister Catherine Tatarelli died of smallpox. These heroic sisters were the victims of charity who totally committed their life for the sake of their brethren following the injection of Jesus the Redeemer who gave his life as a ransom for all and their tombs are in this very chapel. We, the sisters of charity, along with our Father Mula family and all the people of God, thank the Lord for all his graces for the last hundred years. May God be with us to guide and lead us to walk the path trodden by saints, Bartholomew Capitano and Vincenzo Jerusa. I want to welcome our dear Bishop Aloysius Paul, the main celebrant of today, Bishop Avraj uh, Bishop, most reverend one and all. All our dear fathers, our beloved provincial superior, Sister Matilda Montero and sisters, and you, my dear friends, to this Eucharistic celebration. Let's all rise and sing the anthem.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Thank you. 
for the Parasians. Uttamunda, it binds everything together in perfect harmony. Uttam as parts chosen ones, holy, beloved, compassion, kindness, loneliness, meekness, and patience. Compare one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgive each other. As the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. And above all this, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you have called in the one body. And be thankful that the word of God, Christ, dwell in you richly, as you teach and admonish one another in all wisdom, and as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs in thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. The word of the Lord. Lord, when did you see thee hungry and feed thee, 
authority and give thee drink, and when they will see thee a stranger and welcome thee, or naked and clothe thee, and when they will see thee sick or in prison and visit thee, and the king will answer them, Truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of, of these my brethren, you did it to me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to God, Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. In the Gospel, according to St. Jude, chapter 4, verses 22, we read, All spoke well of him, and the power at the words that proceeded from his mouth, and they said to my father, Is this not the son of Joseph? The context was the people saw the wonders and the miracles worked by Jesus. They marveled at the words that proceeded from his mouth, the teachings that were different from others, and they wondered who this person could be. As we celebrate today the witness of the Sisters of Charity in this institution, for the last hundred years, from Bishop Abu Jinsawali to the present Bishop, from the founder Reverend Father Augustus Mola to the present times, from Dr. L.P. Fernandez to the present day physicians, from the 20th century, early 20th century, leprosy and cholera plague patients to the 21st century educated and blind patients have with which they took care of the leprosy patients and bound their wounds. They have wondered all these years how with what function they have taken care of the they have wondered at the love, the commitment that these sisters had all these years in, the, in taking care of the patients in the general wards. They have wondered when these sisters to the last penny have shown them all this their sincerity in taking care of things in America's soul and the general soul. They have wondered, along with the condiments they put in the kitchen while preparing food, they have also put love and fed the sick, the students, the staff, and the well-wishers. They have wondered, how much love these sisters had when they had to take care and give a sense of dignity to the level of patients when they work in the rehabilitation unit. They have wondered when they train the young ladies, girls, form them, give them a sense of mission and prepared them to be the best nurses at those times, probably the best in the world. In all this, they gave their best. In all this, they accomplished that charism lived by their founders or foundresses. When we ask that question, what motivated them, inspired them, gave them that courage? to dedicate their lives in this way in the ministry of the church in the healing ministry we have to go back to the lives of those two foundations 
Vincent the Jerusalem and Bartholomew the Nathaniel. Vincent the Jerusalem, also called Catherine, when she saw the suffering all around her, especially the sick people, her heart bled for them. And when there was a proposal to start a hospital, the first of its kind in that part of the world, she donated the very house that came to her as her inheritance and also the property that came to, came to her and later she committed her whole life in taking care of the sick people in that hospital. The first of its kind that was established in the year 1826 and she was the first person to take care of the patients with love and concern. And they say it was for the first time that the patients saw that kind of care, the clean bed sheets, the bed that was made, somebody washing, cleaning their wounds and showing them love and concern. Love to take care of the poor and serve the poorest of the poor. And even the department patients, things that were so difficult, self-effacing, that she was the first one to go and to do with love and dedication. Later, when she needed an administrator to run this hospital, a side fell on Bartholomew Capitano. Even though her hands were full at that time with various responsibilities, she, under obedience, accepted this responsibility. And they say, from that day onwards, the life in that hospital became different because there was a ministering angel taking care. The patients so much loved her, at every time they wanted her to be with them, to that she could reach out to the depressed, to the sick, touch their souls, that she could bend and clean, disinfect and bind the wounds of the leprosy patients, the repartment so to say with that zeal and love. And this suppression order not only put at play the religious congregations, but the very survival of each individual. And this was religious men and women of those times to undergo suffering such as inclusion and to find out green avenues where they could be Christ's witnesses and that's why they came well how and acts of charity that they had to show to the government and to the world that they were the ministers that, that, could, that they could bring about the change in the people and that's why they started the social work and the spirit that they had within them the charism that was with them that they tried to live by taking care and serving the sick and the suffering. And this courage that they developed in the congregation later helped them wherever they went. My dear brothers and sisters, as we heard in today's second reading, St. Paul urging the disciples of Jesus, the followers of Jesus, to put on compassion, to put on love and to have patience and above all to make love as the strength in their life. That thing, those characteristics were made real in this institution for the past hundred years by these sisters. And where did they get that courage? Again, as we heard in the today's first reading, God is worried in elect. 
is so advanced that his favor will be with them, that he will lift them up, that he will take care of them, and they will be his given ones. This providence, this God's blessings, has been enjoyed and served by every sister who worked in this institution. So pray, and also the gospel, Jesus telling, whoever did this to the least of my brothers and sisters, did it to me. This is conviction. With total commitment and dedication, utter love, sacrificing oneself from the time when there was praying, people were afraid to look at a person who was placed straight to go and to take care of them. When there was little leprosy and they were shunted from the families, from the houses, and from the villages, or from the towns, to minister to such people and to take care of them. That kind of stuff. To the least of my brothers, my sisters, whatever you did, you fed them, you clothed them, you took care of them. When they were sick, you ministered them. And with this, you have done all this to me. This mission has been continued by Jesus all these hundred years. My dear sisters, as today you celebrate this witness of hundred years of dedicated love and commitment to the church, to the church of Mangalore and to this institution, what are the feelings that come to your mind? Is it we have done enough? Is it we have done our best? Nothing more to be done. A person went to last a stage and read. When shall I stop giving? You are tired of giving and giving and giving. When shall I stop giving? And the sage answered, When God stops giving to you, you also can stop giving. When God stops giving to you, you also can stop giving. Till then, keep on giving. My dear sisters, was God gracious and generous to you all these hundred years? Has He blessed you in every way? and ministered in, in them and that satisfaction, the joy, the fulfillment and confidence is yours. To thousands and probably millions of people whom your sisters have touched, to whom, to these millions of people, you have been the witnesses and ministers of Jesus Christ, our Savior. This celebration may help each one of you to be one step closer to the charism of your founders. One step closer to that spirit that motivated to those two great saints to give their everything serving others, the needy, especially the sick. To me, may God bless you. Gratitude for Heavenly Father, for all the best things you have taught upon the sisters who are celebrating this centenary. Let us offer our prayers and petitions.
to our Heavenly Father, ask Him to bless them abundantly, to them the grace of their need in their ministry. Institution and all the works 
that are being carried on here. But your blessings we feel we will do our best to serve you with love and dedication and so your people in the same spirit. Grant this in the name of Jesus our Lord.
by the power of the working of the Holy Spirit to give life to all things and make them holy and to never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, the Lord will not be for you by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, that you command we celebrate these messages. For on the night he was betrayed, himself to bread and giving you thanks he said a blessing. Broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Peace. 
peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but the pain of your turn, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We may serve you more devotedly and 
be worthy of still further blessings through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May God, who by the resurrection of his only beloved Son was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. May he, by whose redeeming word you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism to faith by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with Him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ.